Hello and welcome everybody to another episode of our Duotone Foiling Tech Talk. I'm Klaas and I'm standing here with Jerome Bonnier, our foil designer. Today we want to talk about foil tuning and uh, especially about this little bag here that comes with your foil and it contains four little plastic pieces here, so-called shims or wedges. Jerome, what are these about and what should we do with this? So we use these shims to uh, change the angle of attack of the stabilizer. You might want to raise the trailing edge of the stabilizer or raise the leading edge of the stabilizer depending on if you want a little bit more or less front foot pressure as you ride. Okay. So basically we've got four shims. Two of them are positive and the other two are negative. The positive ones will give you more front foot pressure. The negative one will give you less front foot pressure. And obviously, the bigger the number, the more the front foot pressure increases or decreases. So we've got plus 0.3 and plus 0.6, minus 0.3 and minus 0.6. These numbers are actually degrees that we're changing the angle by. Mm -hmm. And um, you can also stack two of them on top of each other. If, for example, you want a plus 0.9 degree in change of angle of attack, you could just stack the plus 0.6 and plus 0.3. Okay. Yeah, maybe you show us how that works. Sure. In the meantime, I think you guys should know, Jerome also explained very well how a foil works in our foil basic um, tech talk. So if you want to get nerdy and see all the details of um, what effects we have here on the back wing, um, you should check that out. and. Uh, now we're talking about how we actually trim and find the sweet spot with these shims if you have the ability to feel that. Sure, so there I was just uh, placing the shim between the stabilizer and the fuselage and uh, make sure that you, you place the little arrow which is on the shim, you want the arrow facing forward because if you put it the other way around then so it won't have arrow the Arrow in riding direction? Yeah, in the riding direction. And there you go, it's simply a matter of fitting, in, fitting the shim in between the stabilizer and the fuselage, tighten the bolt, and you're good to go. And now you raise the trailing edge. Yeah, so that so means the back wing gets more power? Yeah, it, it pushes a little bit more down, which sort of raises the front of your board or gives you that front foot pressure that you might have been missing. Uh, so right now I've put a plus 0.3 degrees. I could go on the water, try that. If I think it's not there yet and I, I'm missing a little bit more, I'd come back to the beach, remove the, the 0 0.3 degrees and put the positive 0 0.6. Mm -hmm. yeah. So how do I know what I should do? If I'm, let's say, I buy a Duotone board, I buy a Duotone foil, um, how should I know if I should choose this or that or which shim I should use or should I use them at all? I mean, we spend quite a lot of time making sure that out of the box without any shims, the foils work, you know, you, we don't really want the customers to be messing around if they don't have to. Um, it's, uh, I would say you'd start definitely by riding the, the foil without any shims and see how you find it. Maybe have one or two sessions, sometimes you need a little bit of time to get used to a foil, something like that. And then you want to assess how that sort of front foot pressure is changing as you accelerate. Uh, ideally, you want that front foot pressure to stay completely identical or close to it as you go, as you accelerate. If you find that you're building more and more front foot pressure, you want to use a negative shim. To reduce to it. To reduce the mm -hmm. front foot. If you find that you're missing some front foot pressure, you want to use a positive shim. So take the, yeah, take the time to go out there, ride a little bit, try some stuff, maybe you think everything's fine, but by, by trying a shim, you'll be like, oh, hold on, this actually feels better. Yeah, I mean, you, you'll probably be amazed by how much this tiny little, little thing can change the way your foil uh, rides. Now you just mentioned if you're accelerating and it changes, what about I'm having like constantly from the moment I take off, constantly have that front foot, like the foil wants to push me out? then it's probably not an issue with the actual shims, but the positioning of your mast. You probably have placed a mast too far forward in your, in your tracks. So then in that case, you want to move your mast back and see if that solves the problem. Mm -hmm. And if I constantly have power on my back leg, I obviously do the opposite. The opposite. You want to try pushing the mast forward. Okay. 
Yeah. So different waters, um, if I'm, for example, in a freshwater lake, cold water versus Maui, 25 degree um, so, salty waters, um, there's a lot of difference in lift, right? Is, yeah. that, is that when I'm when I should use shims? I know that some of our Maui team riders, they like to use negative shim to take lift out of the foil. You're, you're right. If fresh water and cold water tend to sort of lift a little bit less, so if you've got a specific foil that feels perfectly balanced, I don't know, in, on Maui, uh, it could be that if you use that same foil in fresh water, especially if it's cold water, uh, you find that you need a positive shim. And the opposite could be true. If your foil feels perfectly fine in fresh water and you take it in salt water, you go on holiday somewhere warm, could be that you find you need a negative shim to sort of uh, reduce a little bit that, that front foot pressure. Mm -hmm. So you're right to bring that up for sure. So, but that's definitely something for people that have a bit of an advanced level. If you're a beginner, you probably won't feel it. You have too many other things to deal with and you can basically plug and play our foils. Yep. If you're riding on a board from a different brand, for example, that has a different foil position, track position or different foot strap positions, that's where you might want to adjust your foil a little bit yep. to match the right positioning. Um, yeah, and uh, I think if you got the level and you want to fine tune, that's where you have the options to, sure. uh, to play with these. So I hope this was helpful for you guys. Thanks a lot, Jerome, for the insights. Um, if you like this content, give us a like. And if you have questions, give us a comment. Maybe worth a mention, there's one more shimming option that we are offering, which is not part of the foil package, but we offer an accessory, which is a base plate shim. Means we are shimming actually the whole foil under the base plate of the mast. What that does is it's not really changing the trim of the foil by itself, but it's changing the position of uh, your front foot height. Like uh, you can reduce the, basically the reduce the rocker of the board a little bit, bring the nose down, get a better pumping efficiency, lift the nose, make the whole system a bit more playful or increase a little bit the front foot through that. Yeah. Um, that's something you can find a clip on our socials, how that works. Um, but this is the package that actually comes with the foil. So these are your options to change your foil itself in terms of trim. And All I right. think that if you do lose this, you can buy this as a spare part, right? Of course. That's also available. These are tiny little things. Make sure you don't lose them. Yeah. <laughs> but if you do, they are available on our website. Okay, as I said, if you like this content, leave us a subscribe because uh, there's a lot more um, foil tech talks that we've been going through. The whole theory about how, how a foil works is probably interesting in relation to this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope to see you in the next episode.